Today, we're talking about gallbladder pain, specifically due to gallstones. I'm Dr. Jen. It's good to see you. I'm going to tell you about what the gallbladder is, uh, what it does, but also I'm going to tell you who's likely to get gallstones and also what they are. But the main reason for this video is to talk about the pain that gallstones can cause, both biliary colic, but also pain uh, secondary to an acute inflammation of the gallbladder. We call that acute cholecystitis. Okay, guys, again, Dr. Jen Cottle, it's good to, good to see you. Okay, so we have a lot to cover. Let's jump right in. All right, so first of all, the gallbladder, it's a pear-shaped sac-like organ. Um, it's got a wall that's made out of a sort of like a muscle. It's about three to six inches long and it's in the right upper quadrant. Okay, so let me just sit up higher so that you guys can see the right upper quadrant, okay, the right side and this is the upper quadrant of the abdomen, okay, it's right underneath the liver. Now the gallbladder is connected to the liver and intestine through small tubes called bile ducts. You probably heard about all of this. Now the main purpose of the gallbladder is really to store and concentrate bile. It's, it's like a, a green brown fluid that the liver makes. And bile is really important because it carries waste out of the liver, but we also need it to help digest and absorb fatty foods and to absorb fat soluble vitamins. If you've seen any of my videos on vitamins, I've talked about water soluble versus fat soluble. Well, ding, ding, ding. This is where that comes into play. We don't exactly know why gallstones develop, but there are a number of factors that increase the risk of developing gallstones. I'll never forget, but okay, like a little digression here, okay? I'll never forget when I was in anatomy class um, in med school and we were doing abdominal dissection, we got to the gallbladder and my cadaver had, the gallbladder was filled with gallstones and they were like these yellow stones they were huge and literally they are like stones like these round stones i was like oh my gosh definitely a moment i will never forget um so again we don't know exactly why they develop but there are a number of risk factors okay so some risk factors include things like your sex gallstones or are more common in women than in men but also age is a risk factor okay so the risk of gallstones actually increases with age um, and especially becomes more frequent over the age of 40 years old okay also family history if you have a family history of gallstones um, you may have them as well in fact I have a family history of gallstones some of my relatives have them and have had gallbladder disease had their gallbladders out by the way write in the comments I should have said this before write in the comments if you've had your gallbladder out or have gallstones or biliary pain or things like that okay and then there are other factors may that may increase your risk of getting gallstones like pregnancy uh, the use of certain medications that contain estrogen, things like birth control pills, uh, being obese, uh, fasting, like frequent fasting, like going long periods without meals can increase your risk. Also rapid weight loss. Okay. Or like in, or in those like uh, folks who've had uh, weight loss surgery, if you're not exercising, even things like diabetes can uh, increase that risk. There's also other conditions too, things like um, sickle cell disease um, and other conditions associated with rapid destruction of red blood cells. Also, cirrhosis of the liver, certain medications, etc. Okay. Now, this is the thing: having gallstones does not mean you're going to have symptoms of gallstones. No. In fact, uh, I might have gallstones and just don't know it. Plenty of gallstones remain silent. Okay. Meaning you don't have any symptoms, and a lot of times we do nothing about those. In fact, many people with gallstones that are silent, we may not even know they have them. Okay. But now let's talk about gallbladder pain due to gallstones, and we're going to first focus on biliary colic. This is also known as like biliary pain, gallstone pain. This is probably one of the most common like first symptoms people get of gallstones, okay? And what happens is you can get these attacks of belly pain in the right upper quadrant because remember that's where the gallbladder is, just under the ribs, okay? Um, sometimes people feel it in the center of the abdomen, even the lower chest, so sometimes it can be confused with like chest pains or things like that. But this is the thing, you often get nausea, vomiting, and pain that might radiate to the shoulder or back. The pain often has like a timing and a pattern, okay? Um, so oftentimes eating a fatty meal is a trigger for gallbladder contraction and many patients report pain after eating a fatty meal, okay? Sometimes the pain is at night. Generally the pain lasts at least 30 minutes. It starts to sort of at least taper, you know, plateau within an hour. It starts to, starts to subside and the whole attack is gonna last less than six hours, okay? So this is sort of like a gallbladder attack, biliary pain, et cetera, okay? Once you start getting these, the symptoms are likely to keep coming and you may be at risk at increased risk for complications, all right? 
in general, this sort of biliary colic is caused by the gallbladder contracting and forcing a stone against the gallbladder outlet or cystic duct opening, which can cause pressure in the gallbladder and that pressure results in pain, okay? And then as the gallbladder relaxes, the stones fall back from the cystic duct and the pain slowly subsides. All right, that's sort of one type of pain that can come and go. Again, it can kind of lead someone up to acute cholecystitis, which is a complication of gallstones. Acute cholecystitis is the most common complication of gallstones. This is when your gallbladder is actually inflamed. That cystitis itis is inflammation. And that refers to you have the right upper quadrant pain, but you have fever. You have a white blood cell count on your labs that's generally associated with the inflammation of the gallbladder. And that pain is not the same as this biliary colic, okay? This pain is steady. It's severe. It's typically longer than six hours. The pain can radiate to the shoulder back. And, and also you get fever, nausea, vomiting, not wanting to eat. And yes, there tends to be a history of eating like fatty food, etc. But this is the thing. With acute cholecystitis, which is gallbladder inflammation, not the biliary colic that we were talking about, patients look sick. Okay, you are sick. You do not feel well. You probably have a fever. Your heart is tachycardic or going fast. You are sick and you know you're sick. You don't also want to move with acute cholecystitis due to gallstones because movement can cause more pain. So generally, these patients kind of stay still. Okay. And also if someone goes to reach for your belly, like a doctor, or whatever, you're going to guard, you're going to brace yourself. Okay. That's what we call guarding. Um, I want you to understand these sort of two differences. Now, one thing I can tell you is that acute cholecystitis, which is the inflammation of the gallbladder can be caused due to other things than just gallstones, but gallstones are a major, major cause of acute cholecystitis. Okay. So I really hope this makes sense, but just understand that. And yes, there are different presentations of gallstones, but I wanted to focus specifically on like the biliary colic, that that's kind of like, you know, you get like, Oh God, I got some pain here around the time you eat, but it will go away. You're not too, too sick. But then the acute cholecystitis pain, when you've got the gallstones and you're like, oh my gosh, I'm really sick and you don't want to move. And you're like, I got to go to the hospital. Generally in the cholecystitis picture, we are taking out the gallbladder. That is certainly something that needs to see the hospital. What I would say is with any gallbladder pain of any, any sort, okay. Or any pain in the right upper quadrant, it doesn't have to be your gallbladder. It could be something else um, radiating to that side. You got to see your doctor. Okay. Just understand that in this right upper quadrant, we have the liver and we have the gall, uh, gallbladder and a few other things some ducts and stuff like that. So there is a possibility for, for issues with the gallbladder and surrounding, um, surrounding organs. I want you to let me know what you think about this video. Share it with someone else. I'm Dr. Jen Caudill, practicing family physician on air health expert and video creator. Please, um, subscribe to my channel. Please follow me on Facebook. I'm on Instagram, TikTok, LinkedIn, WhatsApp. Also, please go to my website, drjencaudill.com. I'll see you there. Oh, sign up for my free health newsletter there. All right, guys.